watch and clocks, right? But previously, before having these clocks, our elders used to find out the time based upon the shadows of hours with the help of the sunlight. That means they have they used to determine with the shadows of hours. In accordance to that, they used to determine the time durations, either morning, afternoon, or evening. But during our ancestors time they have seen that the common repetition of the movements of the earth sun and moon therefore they have calculated that the revolution of earth sun and moon determines the days and nights and the years and months that's what here i am showing that the frequent movement not a pulsar is every day sun rises and every day sunsets right that is the first frequent movement of sun now the rising of sun is known as the day it is called as the day and the sunset is known as night thus day and night has been day for okay now later the month how it is calculated is it is based upon the movement of moon that is one full new moon when one full new moon is completed then it is said to be as one month okay in this way the month has been calculated and by coming to an year the sun is the center of our universe right and this earth is moving around the sun right it is rotating itself on its own axis and at the same time it is revolving around the sun Therefore, the one complete rotation of the Earth from one point, then it is said to be as an year. It is calculated as year based upon the leap year. It is considered as 366 days and 365 days. Okay, non-leap year consists of 365 days and leap year consists of 366 days. In this manner, the days, nights, months, and years has been calculated previously by the ancestors. But now The frequent measuring units what we are seeing is the watches and clocks. There are different types of clocks, that's wall clock, right table clocks, and digital clocks, and all. You will be seeing that. And based upon the standard types of, if you observe on the geographical maps, see the Earth is a globe-like structure, right? And it is based upon the meridians, that is latitudes and longitudes, which are passing through the Earth's equator, right? Now here the time is calculated based upon the latitudes which are passing towards the Earth. Here you will see that for Americans it is one time because for us night it is calculated as daytime for them, right? So in this manner we will be considering the times of their particular countries or particular states. So our in India we will be we will be using the Indian standard time that is three inch meridian time that is used as a standard time by our Indians okay now if at all we need we can use the same american timings and everything we can place in one clock and we can observe it it is very available but now what i want to say is this clocks and watches which are defining the time means we are calculating by based upon the time that is seconds minutes and hours right but this is mostly critical but what i want to do is i want to do an activity that is taking one simple pendulum by showing that time duration of a second that is i have taken a simple pendulum which is i shown in the figure i have tied a ball or a stone or anything which is in a circular shape to the thread and i have enabled it to stand by the help of a stand now here i have seen that i have projected the ball towards the earth now this ball i have attached at the center and i have brought it to one edge and i have left it now it starts moving from left to right right that is this is known as the to and fro motion of the pendulum and this type of motion is known as the periodic motion and this is one of one, one of the most good example for the motions of objects and this to and fro motion of this pendulum will result in a calculation of time that is how we see first 
Let us assume this is as the A point and this as B point. Now this pendulum will be starting from A and it goes towards the B and again it comes to A, right? That means from center to A and to B and again to the center point will lead to completion of one oscillation. This movement of to and fro together is known as one oscillation and therefore this pendulum takes many oscillations based upon that we will be calculating the time that is the time taken to complete one full oscillation. I hope you are understanding that is from A to B and again to the center C. The total time taken for this process is known as the time period. That is known as the time taken by pendulum to complete one oscillation is known as time period. And the length is measured, that is around, well, let us take around 400 centimeters, I assume it. And the ball area also is considered into the calculations of the time period, right? Now, here we will be seeing that the time period has the time taken to complete one oscillation, and at the same time, we will be taking the units of the time period, that is, units of time is generally what we will be taking the SA units of time is. How much range we are uh, uh, moving in, how much distance. 
distance that means how much time we are taking to move a particular distance and how we are slower than the others means the comparison between the two speeds and all will be done with the help of the speedometer that means the range how fast we are going is reflected on the mirrors that is shown on the speedometer of the vehicles as shown in the figure this type of uh, meters will be placed on the vehicles right and then here we will be seeing the units kilometers per hour that is the major units for this speed that is speed equals to distance by time that is kilometers per hour and the another type of meters are also used in order to measure the speed of the vehicles that is known as odometer odometer is another instrument which is used to find out the speed and the speedometer and odometer are the two types of meters which are used in the vehicles presently for the sake of measuring of speed. Now, let us see how to measure the speed with the help of a simple activity. That is, let us take one ball and I have shown here, see of course, this, I have drawn a straight line that is in green color and I will be passing the ball from one edge. I am passing the ball from here and the distance taken to travel the, or to cross the line, the time taken is noted down in first by first step and in the second step, the time taken for the settlement or for the position of rest of the ball is noted down. That means the difference between the crossing line of the ball and the point where the ball takes its rest position. That means here the ball has been crossed out, right? And that is known as, let us assume as A position. And in the second position, the ball came to the rest position that is known as B position. Now, we will be calculating the difference between these two points, that is the distance between A and B. That distance is measured and that is known as the speed of the ball. By that, we can, uh, we can assume or we can analyze the speed of the ball based upon the force, how much we are exerting on the body of the ball or on the surface of the ball, how much pressure we are applying that much resultant speed will be obtained. And now let us see, that is the basic activity in order to find out the speed we will be using. And now let us see, in motorcycles you will be seeing that time is fixed up, right? That is based upon the meters, I have said that the speedometer and odometer is the meters used to fix up the time on the motorcycles. These motorcycles have these meters we intimate gives us a great information regarding the speed and it cautions to, to drive the vehicles below 100 speed during the emergency areas. Okay? Now, here we will be seeing the measuring of the speed of a ball with the help of calculating the distance. Right? Now, the distance covered how we have defined the speed? Speed is defined as the time taken to travel a particular distance, right? Therefore, it is known as the rate of distance by time taken. Now, I am saying that the distance covered is noted on how much the ball has passed and how, how it returned to the rest position. And now we will be taking the speed into time, right? The product of speed and time will give us the distance, right? Therefore, this distance travel is known as speed into time and the units of measurement are kilometers per hour, either kilometers per hour, kilometers per second or minutes per second are considered as the units of speed and majorly used units are the lesser units are kilometers per hour. Okay? And now we will be seeing how to convert the meters to kilometers and kilometers to meters as shown in the earlier classes that is at all the, if for example Sunita is there and she is traveling around 100 kilometers for 2 hours okay 100 kilometers by 2 hours that is 100 by 2 kilometers per hour that is the speed of the Sunita now we have to convert it into meters then what we will be doing it that is 100 kilometers by 2 hours into 5 by 18 we will be considering because 1 kilometer equals to Five by eighteen. So 